Before we get started on building the website and actually doing the, the development of the website, there's some important concepts we need to understand. I've gone ahead and built a, a web page that looks kind of like the one we're actually going to build. Now, on this web page, I do not have what's called an external style sheet. An external style sheet is a set of rules that govern how a website is constructed and basically how it's managed. If you look at this web page here that we've already got up on the screen, you'll notice up here it says banner, it says menu, it says body, it says footer. Well, I've gone ahead and started using uh, what we call dev tags. If you look down here on this, you'll see <clears throat> this dev ID menu, and then you'll see dev ID body and all that kind of stuff here. Well, this information is done using the insert command. And oh, by the way, what we want to do is when we're working on a web page and we're going to be adding dev tags and working in what we call uh, the cascading style sheet and HTML method, we want to reset ourselves down here to uh, classic. The classic uh, layout gives us a, a lot simpler way of working with things and it's a little easier to do than the custom layout that, that you can create, which sometimes is necessary. But in looking at this web page that you see right here, it's pretty simple. you got this body right here and then you've got uh, these dev tags which are containers that hold information that we need. But above the body tag, if you look up here, is you see all this code right here. You see all these definitions. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to hit a enter uh, below the document, uh, untitled document in the title, title tag. And you can see here where it says uh, style type text CSS. Well, that says cascading style sheet. Well, all these rules for this right here are governed up in this section right here for the body and for everything that you see right here. Well, this kind of information is what we call an inline style sheet. Everything is included inside the actual web page. Well, if I'm building hundreds and hundreds of web pages, this information has to be put into each and every one of those web pages. So that's a lot of stuff to, to manage and to maintain and to keep up for each individual web page. Now, if I take this information and I build a website with an external style sheet, then all of the web pages that I create afterwards, the hundreds and hundreds of web pages that I create afterwards, will be governed by uh, this information if I put it in an external style sheet. Well, let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and open up this web page right here. And as you can see up in this web page, I've already got a menu system that I've been working on. But what's important about this web page is if we come up here, so I'm going to come back to that title tag on this one, hit a, hit a space, and I've come in and I've built, as you see right here, an external style sheet that has that information in it. And as we go forward building our website, we'll be using an external style sheet. Well, what does that look like? Well, let's go look. Here it is up here. It says plat menu uh, CSS, .sf, CSS. That stands for plat menu, which you see right here. And it's got a cascading style sheet. When I click on this file, you can open it up and see all the kind of same text we just looked at. And this right here governs that web page and how that web page is going to look. So the benefit to you is, is if you've got an image for your website, maybe it's your banner, it's your footer, or whatever, it's only stored and called in this one file, and yet all of the web pages will reference this one file. So if I need to make a change, I just change the website, and it will change or cascade through all of the other web pages. It's a very important concept. Here you have inline again. Right? Everything is in each and every web page. That's a whole lot of work. Or you have this one web page, maybe you have hundreds of these web pages, and it calls this one simple file here, uh, this cascading style sheet file. And again, that file governs your whole website. Now, now we're going to go ahead and start building a brand new web page here going forward, and we're going to use it creating a brand new cascading style sheet. Uh, pay attention, it's a lot of fun, and you'll get the concept as we're doing it. But make sure you set yourself to classic view on your uh, Dreamweaver uh, version that you're working at on your workspace. I've gone back and closed all my files in Dreamweaver and now I'm going to start building what I will call the prototype web page for our website. I prototype everything in one web page first and then I get everything correct and right and then I'll start saving them out as the actual files that I need. So that way we have this one prototype that we can test and create and work on and experiment with until we actually get it the way we want. Okay, as you see here, we have our Dreamweaver splash page that's come up. You can turn it off if you want. I don't like to turn it off. I like to use it a lot. So I'm going to come over here and click on HTML. 
and it automatically opened up my web page and created me this new web page. Now, first of all, let's uh, look at a few things here. I've come up and I'm in the what we call split view here. Now, again, you can be in code view where all you're seeing is pure code. Or I'm going to go back to split where you can see both the code and the design view. We also have design view itself where we can see everything that we code. Kind of what you see is what you get or also known as WYSIWYG environment. Then you have what's called the live view. The live view is everything that the website's going to look like almost. It's going to have pretty much the same view that a browser would have like Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Safari. But it's not actually that. It kind of prototypes or gives you a snippet of what it's going to look like if you did open it up in a browser. Well, we're going to go ahead and turn live view off and we're going to come back to split view. Now, let's make sure that we got a few things set up the way we need to. Let's make sure we're set to classic view and not some custom website view like either designer or plat designer, whatever you have already created. We're going to work from the classic view first, okay? So make sure that's there. Now, once that's set up, we're actually ready to start taking care of our code. Now, if you notice, the cursor is just right here in this little quadrant in the upper left-hand corner of this page. We're going to add one little bit of uh, inline code here, uh, inline CSS code into the web page, and it's going to be where we actually put the start of our container. So we're going to come down here to Page Properties. Now, it's going to open up the appearance in CSS. Well, with that done, we'll come down here. We're going to set a, a uh, left margin to zero. We're going to set a right margin to zero as well, and top margin to zero, and top margin to zero. See, what Dreamweaver had done earlier by it being a little bit off the edge is it just basically said gave you a little bit of a buffer. We're taking that all back to zero, so we hit OK. So now you notice that the cursor is right here on the very edge of the split view. Now, if you look over here, you have inside of here uh, a little bit of CSS code that's been added. Now we're going to leave that for now, but we're going to come back and add it later to our style sheet. Now importantly, notice it says untitled document. Let's give that a name. We're going to come up here and we're going to say a prototype. Move this out of the way. Prototype web page 001. I always use version control when I actually create a file. So I hit enter. And as I do that, you notice it now has this up at the top, and now it also has the prototype here added to the title. It's kind of a neat feature that Dreamweaver has added to the software. Okay, now we're ready to start uh, inserting what we call dev tags. Dev tags, again, are the containers that will go down here in the body of our web page. And as we insert these containers, these dev tags will dynamically build us our uh, style sheet as we go. We'll stop here for now. Okay, real importantly, one thing to note is that when you're working with dev tags, and especially on the Adobe certification test for Dreamweaver, there are several ways upon which you can use uh, Dreamweaver to add a dev tag. For instance, if I go back to Designer View, when I come up to Designer View, you can hit the Insert command, and you can come down here and say insert dev tag right there. Well, we're not going to use this method for this website, but I wanted to show you this because on the Dreamweaver test, it does ask you to find a way in which to insert a dev tag. And it's various different ways as well. So let's go back to classic view again. Now the way we're going to insert our dev tag in this case is going to come over here to insert. We're going to come down to page layout objects and we're going to add a dev tag, just like you see right here. Now in the future versions of Adobe, uh, Creative Cloud for Dreamweaver, they have taken away the Spry menu bars and all the Spry accordions. They're actually using what's called jQuery, as you see down here. But for our purposes, we're going to keep this very, very simple. We're going to add a dev tag. Now, one thing to note, and I'll get to that later, is that we're going to use pure CSS on the creation of this website. Now, it says add it at the insertion point. When I'm right there at the body, as you see over here in the uh, uh, code view, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use capital letters to define my CSS rules that I'm creating. I always use capitals because it's just a lot easier for me to read. So I go ahead and hit container, C-O-N-T-A-I-N-E-R, and I'll go ahead and create a new rule. And it's important that right now it says the ID applies only to one HTML editor. We're going to go ahead and do that here. However, we're going to come down and we're going to say new CS, a new style sheet file. When I create the new style sheet file, it's going to come up and ask me some information. So I hit OK, 
and now it's going to ask me to create my style sheet. Well, again, this is a prototype, so we're going to give the style sheet a file name called prototype. I'm going to say prototype. I'll use all lowercase prototype underscore web score site sheet. I actually, let's take that off. Let's say website 001 because they may come back and change the versions. That looks pretty good. It's going to save it in my website folder that I've created. Hit OK or save. Okay. So there it's added it. Now, what's real simple about this is as we added this style sheet, we're going to come down here and we're going to go to the box, which is what defines the sheet, and we're going to set this to auto, and we're going to set this to auto as well. We're going to take the same off right here, and we're going to say down here at the right, we're going to say auto there, and the same down here for left, we're going to say auto there as well. We're going to come over here to border, I'm going to set it to solid, and we're going to set it to zero. Hit OK and hit OK here. So as you can tell, it's gone out and done a couple things. One, it's created this dev tag here called container just below the body as you see here. In fact, it's got it highlighted here by the text you see up here. Now, what I'm going to do right now, well, before I do that, so you see this here, it's been added. Let's go up here. Notice that it created that style sheet page right here, the style sheet website. Um, uh, 001.css file. Let's click on that. There it is. You see, here's all the rules that we set up for this new CSS rule here. It's been added up into that. And if you come over here to CSS styles, you're also going to see that right here as well. So it has the rules that's been created for this style sheet added over here. So that automatically got created for you. Now again, let's understand something. This style sheet here that got created is going to govern all of the web pages we create there are no inlines information in there except you know for this one page that we created back over here and we're going to copy that be that in back into this so all of this information is in there now so we'll go back over here to this file now let's do some cleaning up real quick let's give this uh we've got this web page created here we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this page i'm going to go ahead and hit file save as and I'm going to give this thing a web page name. I'm going to call this one prototype underscore web page or website, I'm sorry. And we'll give a version number 001. Okay. Okay. So it's created that and given us that name. I'm going to come back over here to this as well and I'm going to save that file too. I'm just going to hit save because that works fine for me. Now, so we're back here in the source code. Okay, here we are for now. We're going to come back to this in a moment, and we're going to start adding the dev tags. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and start adding in the dev tags for the banner, the menu, the body, and the footer. So, first thing is, those are all going to fit inside the container uh, tag we just created here, as you see. Uh, now that I've got this selected here, if you don't have it selected, go ahead and select it. We're going to delete that. Now we're going to come up to insert uh, layout objects dev tag. And at this point, we're going to say after uh, start a tag, and that tag is going to be the container, and this rule is going to be the banner. Get that all capitalized. Okay, a uh, new CSS rule, and we're going to say it's inside this particular element here, banner. Okay, that's good. I'm going to select that. We're going to come out with the box. I'm going to key that into for the banner. It's 1024 uh, by 100 pixels because that's the size we made our actual banner when we created in Photoshop. I'm going to set this to auto and set the left to auto. So right and left set to auto. We come down to border. We're going to set a solid border with a thickness of zero. Sounds a bit ironic, but that's what we need to do. Go ahead and hit OK. And so there's our, our container for uh, banner. Now what we're going to do is kind of come over here and look at our code and make sure that it dropped down and stepped over a bit. That looks pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and say insert another layout object, dev tag. And this time we're going to say after tag. And the tag we're going after is the banner. And we're going to call this one menu. Menu, new CSS rule. Hit OK, that's all fine. And then we're going to come down here to box, and then on our menu, it's going to be 1024 as well. 
the height's going to be 30 pixels and I'm going to come down here same for all I'm going to go to uh, unclick that I'm going to say auto I'm going to do list auto and then go over to border I'm going to set that to solid and I'm going to set that to zero and I'm going to hit OK so we've added that as well so I uh, hadn't added it yet until I hit OK so we've added that as well and you can kind of see how this is all stepping down just below the container tag and that's all good so the next one we'll go ahead and hit enter is uh, insert I'm sorry we hit the layout object skin dev tag and this one we'll just say after tag in this case it's going to be the menu we're going to key in the body the body is the area where we store all of our visual content on our website it may be where our movies are our text are our images etc go ahead and hit ok on this and again same thing as was before on um, this time though the body is of course 1024 but the height is going to be auto because it's going to size to the size of our content that we're placing in it at that time come down here to right set it to auto come down to left set it to auto go to border again we set it to solid and zero hit ok that looks good we hit ok again and you can see it placed it in here again insert got to put the banner in, uh, footer in there now so insert layout objects dev tag uh, after tag and then in this case we're going to say the body I'm going to call this footer okay let me see this rule okay box uh, 24 and then the, uh, the height of our banner was 60 because that's what we created in Photoshop so it's 1024 by 60 pixels hit auto hit auto and then for again solid for our pull down on this zero for our border thickness hit OK all right that looks pretty good hit OK on that again and there it places it in there so now we've laid out our, our website with all our containers in it and that looks pretty good laid out this web page it looks good and if we come over here to our CSS you can see how it added it inside our CSS file our cascading style sheet file our container and then it's got all of the other information in it as well that we needed for the footer and stuff that looks pretty good